He reigns forevermore. Good morning and welcome to Abundant Living, a casual look into the Word of God with the preaching ministry of Dr. Gary Bradley, minister of the Mayfair Church of Christ, located in Jones Valley in Huntsville. The Mayfair Church is a loving, Christ-centered church with a vision and a dream of sharing Jesus with the Tennessee Valley and the entire world. Every Sunday, Gary touches people's lives with the good news, and now he wants to share it with you one-on-one. So join us for the next few minutes as together we find the solutions to life's problems. Are you searching for those answers this morning? We believe the answers are there in God's Word and that each of us can have the abundant life God wants to give us. He reigns And now your host, Dr. Gary Bradley. Good morning and welcome to Abundant Living. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday morning. Here we're walking right on through the month of July and I hope all is well with you and your loved ones. Thank you for your comments. Regarding the program last week, uh, just the 4th of July, a time when we were supposed to be really, really grateful for the country that we live in. And, you know, I'm going to pick up right where I left off last Sunday because this is too important for us to just play like it's not happening and it's not going. A friend of mine asked me, as I told you the other day, he asked me the other day, will God always bless America? Well, that caused me to go back and and again look at the Scriptures because I've got to ask, okay, God, what have you said in your Scriptures? What have you said in the Word of God? Will God always bless America? So this is kind of, you know, I've always felt like I don't want, when I preach, I don't want the kids or the parents to get in the car and say, I wonder what Brother Bradley was talking about. I don't want that. I I don't want to waste my time, and I don't want to waste yours. Now, I read last week from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, where Paul says, I want you to pray that I may have the boldness, the courage, the intestinal fortitude to say what needs to be said for such a time as this. And that's what I'm trying to do with all the love and with all the respect that I can. So thank you so much for watching. I want to tell you again, I did last week, about this letter that I received. And the only reason I'm telling you, I don't want you to do this. This this is what somebody did. And this just shows me that there is a remnant, that there is still... My answer to my friend's question, yes, God's going to bless America because there are a few people that still want to follow him. Would that be right? So I opened this letter a couple of days ago, and there's no postmark. I have no earthly idea who it's from. And I opened it up. It's addressed to Dr. Bradley in the Abundant Living Mayfair Church address. Please use this money to purchase Bibles for Cuba. And in this letter was 10 $100 bills. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart that this money will go to buy Bibles for people who've never even seen a Bible, let alone have one. But we're able to distribute them all over the island. Now, the greatest need right now is food. People are starving on the island of Cuba. And uh, I had a meeting the other day. I was invited to a meeting uh, by Congressman Dale Strong, our representative of North Alabama, and he wanted to know what people need to be concerned about, what we thought he needs to be concerned about in Washington. And I uh, said a number of things, and but I also said, I wonder what the stand of the feeling is regarding China having a training base in Cuba that was just glazed over the other night on the news, just like uh, it was hardly important. (laughs) Excuse me? We have a training base of communism in Cuba, 90 miles off our coast. What are they training for? Does that go all the way back to the 60s when Khrushchev 
and John Kennedy had a showdown over missiles in Cuba. You re I remember that. I was in Phoenix City across the street from Fort Benning, Georgia. I know what happened. And so when we realize that uh, there's a lot going on and we need to do, now Paul said, uh, go back and read that, that we read last week, you know, Ephesians chapter 6, 18 down through 21. He mentions prayer, I think, five times. He says, pray for all the Christians. Uh, pray for me that I may have the boldness to speak concerning the mysteries of Christ. And then he says it again, pray that I'll have the boldness because I'm an ambassador in chains. An ambassador is a person in a far country representing his home country. Now we're in a far country. Uh, we're like the children of Israel. We're in the wilderness. We're not in the promised land. No, it, this is far from the promised land. Believe me, it's just like the wilderness, isn't it? Because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And that's the reason Paul put so much emphasis on prayer. And that's what I want to talk with us about. And the, the first point I made was that uh, we, we have seen a big cultural sh uh, switch from cognitive knowing. What do I need to know based on what I need to do based upon what I know, not on what I feel. You can feel something and it can be right or it can be wrong. Paul says, I, I thought I was doing right in Acts 26 when I persecuted the church, but I was dead wrong. And so then our feelings need to be based on principle. And, and therefore, we get back to the right and wrong. And like I closed the show last week saying, when have you heard anybody saying something was wrong? The way we dress, the way we act, or undress, the way we conduct ourselves. Uh, is anybody on the media going to come out and say, now, unfortunately, this is not right? No. And then read Romans chapter 1 when he, he talks about this world and the condition that it's in and uh, how God gave them up. God, I think that three or four times in Romans 1 that says God gave them up. He just, that's it. That's it. Some, we need to realize that when the Lord says something, it has strings attached. And we'll look at that in just a few moments. But we as children of God must push back from this me mentality. And, and that's what it's all about. I dress like I want to. I look like I want to. I act like I want to. I'm trying to find myself. Well, I got news for you, friend. You're not going to ever really find yourself until you find the one that created you. Genesis 1 says we're made in the image of God. We have a soul. He gave us a body. The body is not going to last much longer for most of us. And so then what are we going to do then? If a man dies, shall it? Job said this, if a man dies, shall he live again? Yes. And so then let's, let's push back from this. I want to do my thing. See, the difference in being a Christian and not being a Christian is a Christian does what the Lord wants. A non-Christian does what he wants. I've told you just about on every show about Gamaliel in Acts chapter 5. He said, if this thing is for men, fellas, he told, he's a member of the Sanhedrin. And he said, these troublemakers have come in and they've caused trouble. But if it's from man, it'll die. But if it's from God, we got to be careful lest we find ourselves fighting against God. And when we choose wrong, we are finding ourselves fighting against God. But then who said it's wrong? God did. God does in His Word. So we got to push back from the, every time, I, I think I'm correct on this, you might check it and let me know if I'm wrong. Every time the Lord put out the call for followers, the first thing that was in there, but let a man deny himself. Now don't take a bad attitude toward that. He's not talking about persecute yourself or abuse yourself or, or do bad things to yourself. He's not talking about that. He's talking about realizing that you need help and I need help. So let a man deny himself, stop doing what he wants to do, just like when Peter was fishing 
And the Lord called him and he said, oh Lord, you don't want me because I got a filthy mouth. I cuss all the time. And the Lord says, from henceforth, and you know, we don't henceforth very much, but the Lord said, from now on, you will not catch fish, but you're going to catch men. And so then the Lord was able to see the heart of Peter and realize that basically I think he wanted to do good. And who preached on Pentecost? <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah. Who, who opened the doors of the church for the first time? Who complied with the prophecies in Isaiah 2 and Joel 2 and Daniel 2 all came to pass in Acts 2. And then in Luke 24, when Luke records that the Lord said, Y'all stay here in Jerusalem until you shall be endued with power from on high. That was the Holy Spirit when it came upon the apostles. And they began to speak with other tongues or languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. So then let's push back from me too, me first. And that's, that's the whole, like I said, 2 Timothy chapter 3, he says that in the latter days, in the last days, men, the very, he lists some of the horrible things men are, but the very first one was, he's a lover of himself. He just loves himself too much. And that's the reason the Lord put out the call, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. That's the reason the Lord said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. How are you, how you getting along? I got a friend over in Decatur that we were going to play. I think I told you this. We were going to play golf, and, and I'm not a very good golfer. You know, I just, I just hit it hard and wish it well. And uh, so he gets in the golf cart and he says, well, preacher, how you doing spiritually? Excuse me? You're asking me that? Yes. You're asking me that before we play golf? Yes. Okay. Well, I don't remember what I told him, but I can't, I can't forget the fact that that personal friend was concerned about me spiritually. He didn't say you got a fever. He didn't say you're looking good, you're looking bad physically. How you doing spiritually? And I'm asking all over the country, everywhere I get a chance, do you have anybody in your life where you are spiritually involved? We talk about sports, we talk about politics, we talk about everything under heaven, but we never get around to Jesus. And that's so sad because he's the only thing that means anything. So we need to push back from this me mentality. We need to learn to say no. No, I'm not going to watch this program. Cut it off. Uh, you know, I can't keep it on the air. And uh, I know I'm not going to go in this store because now they're uh, giving in to this indication that uh, children and irresponsible adults decide that a little boy wants to be a little girl. Uh, I, can't, I can't close the doors, but I'm not going in there. And I'm not going to buy their product. We need to learn to say no. That's what I told you last week. That's what uh, Mordecai said to Esther. If you remain quiet, in other words, by being quiet, you're saying no. See, there's no such thing as being quiet. You either say yes or no. Just like there's no such thing as putting off the Lord. You, you've, already, you've already answered him. And you said no. And so then here's this matter of being able to say no being because of what's right and what's wrong. We used to know what was right and wrong, but it seems like that's been so clouded and so... But when we denied God, and I remember this back in the late 60s and early 70s, somebody decided God is dead. Well, if God's dead, then who's going to be God? Who's going to tell me what to do? Who's in charge of my soul? Who's in charge of my life? I am. I don't want you to be. I don't want anybody else telling me what to do, so I'll do what I want to do. So we need to push back from me. We need to learn to say no. And number three, we need to realize we're in a spiritual warfare. This thing in Ukraine is just horrible. We see it every night on the news, just like in the 70s and the 60s we saw the war in Vietnam. 
it's awful. It's awful. And, and we get jaded to it. We get, we get uh, oh, what's the word? We get to the point where we say, oh, well, that's way around on the other side of the country. It's not us, but a, a bomb hits a restaurant and kills a bunch of babies and, and children and women and, and old folks. And they dig an open grave and put them all in it. And we say, oh, that's so bad. Yes, it's worse than bad. We know what war is. War means death. War means death. And so if we don't win this war, it's going to cause our death spiritually. And that's the reason Ephesians 6, uh, verse 10, is so, is so important. He said, be strong in the Lord. What do we need? We need a strong military uh, for advance to keep, to keep our safety. We need to have a defense as well as an offense. And so then we know what it means to be strong. It doesn't mean can you lift 100 pounds. It means to be alert, like we talked about last week. It means to be cognitive, aware of what's right and wrong, and have the backbone to stand up to it. That's what it means. So he says, be strong, what, physically? No, well, I'm not as strong as I used to be. No, I'm not talking about that. How strong are you spiritually? Just like in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, though our outward man is decaying, yet our inward man is renewed day by day. Physically, I'm wearing away. Spiritually, I should be getting closer and closer to God. I, I've got to finish well. And I've told you before, when I have the privilege of saying a few words over a loved one that's been with me 40-something years at Mayfair. It's, it's such a blessing to say they finished well. They, they, they complied with Revelation 2.10. Be thou faithful until death, and I'll give you a crown of life. And so then we need to appreciate the fact that we're in a war. And Paul said in Ephesians 6.10, Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Wow. I can be strong because I take my strength from Him. Paul said in Philippians 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Him who strengtheneth me. In other words, and whatever the, the world throws at me, whatever I have to endure, I can make it. Because the Lord is my strength. And that's what I, I, Psalm 46 talks about. Uh, and ever and, and, and always present in time of need. In, in 2 Chronicles 7.14, we have just a few minutes, and I want to register with you about this, because knowing me, I'll probably come back to this next week. He said in 2 Chronicles, uh, they were... They, were, they built the tabernacle, and the tabernacle was going to be where the presence of God was, or the temple, excuse me, not the tabernacle. They built the temple. Solomon built the temple, and they wanted that to represent. But the Lord said, I wanted, my presence will be in the temple, but I want you to dedicate your life to me. And that's the reason he said, if my people, uh, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, read this and we'll look at it in detail next week. When he says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, then will I hear from heaven and will heal their land and forgive them of their sins. To me, that answered my friend's question when he asked me, will God always bless America? And I, I hope, I don't remember what I said really because it, it, it caused me to reflect on what's going on. And, and I refused to get detached. I refused to say, well, that's not my problem. You know, I'm, I'm this, I'm whatever age uh, I am, and, and I'm not long for this world, so just, uh, just go ahead and do what, let the world just go on to hell in a, in a handbasket. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do what the Lord says because I'm His per, I'm, I'm His per, I'm, the, I'm his person. If my people, that's me, who are called by my name, that's me, 
will humble myself. Now, I'm working on that. And pray. Now, I do that. And I call upon the Lord. And, I, and he said, return from his wicked way. See, what I want you to see in this passage is it began with the word if. And it doesn't mean since. Sometimes the word if means since or because. But here it means it's conditional. And that's what we need to remember about what the Lord has said. It's not just a blank check. It's not just, uh, you know, Jason pointed out the other Sunday in a beautiful way about the Ten Commandments. The Lord gave the Ten Commandments because He loved the people. And He said, don't, eight times. Now, when have you heard don't? When have you said, when have you heard that that, that, that person ought not do that? Don't do that. And I, I said the other day in a sermon that, that sometimes parents just get so tolerant. They say, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, or I'm going to whip you. Well, whip them respectfully and tactfully. Punish them so they'll know that's wrong and this is right. And that's the obligation we have as parents. I see so many people today who have a theological problem with the authority of God. When the Lord said in Matthew 28, 18, all authority hath been given to me in heaven and on earth. Look, I've got it all. Heaven and earth, there's nothing else than heaven and earth. And with that authority, he says, go make disciples. So when we're under the authority of the Lord, we do what he says as long as what man says doesn't conflict with what the Lord says. But it seems like everything man is saying now is against biblical authority. It's against what we know the Bible teaches. And that's what abundant living has been about for 44 years. And I don't make any apologies for it. And I want you to believe it, not because of what I say, but because of what the Bible says. In Hebrews chapter 1, he says, God in past times spoken to the fathers by the prophets. In other words, the fathers were the preachers back then, being instructed by the prophets. But he said in these last days, he's talked to everybody. He's talked not just to preachers, he's talked to everybody. And that's the reason in John 8, 32, he says, and you will know the truth. You want to know the truth? One of that movie about, uh, what is it, A Few Good Men, uh, uh, you can't stand the truth. A lot of people can't stand the truth because it conflicts to what they want to do and what they, their own agenda. And so if we could just get the will of God to stand. I, I looked over some sermons the other day and I saw one that I'd preached a long time ago entitled The Will of God. Thy will be done. You know the reason heaven is heaven and earth is earth is because in heaven the will of God is done explicitly and on earth it's not even close. And so he says, thy will be done in heaven and on earth. And Paul talked about this when he talked about doing the will of God. That that's the only thing that's really important. So then let's look at 2 Chronicles 7, 14 for next week. And let's, be able, let's look at how we can pull that verse apart. Let's don't act like nothing's going on. Let's don't act like that, well, it'll all work out somehow. No, it's not going to work out unless we work it out. Paul, James says, the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. Let's continue to pray. Let's continue to abide by the law. You know, we're, nowhere in the scriptures did the Lord or any of his writers tell us to revolt and overthrow the government. Uh, that's just not, in fact, Romans 13 talks about the government can be good. The government can be law-abiding. Paul, Paul talked about there being ministers. Paul used the government one time when they beat him unjustly. And they came out and said, now, you know, we did this and we shouldn't. Have. Why don't you slip out the back door and go? And he said, no, I'm going to tell you right up front. You beat me unjustly and I am a Roman citizen. And you ought to be, you ought to be punished for it. And so we need to, as Paul said in Ephesians 6.10, we need to stand and we need to speak up. 
we speak up by prayer and we speak up by making it known lovingly, like in Ephesians uh, 4.15, speak the truth. That's what I've tried to do and it's what I'm going to do as long as I'm on the air. Speak the truth in love. We love everybody. Why? Because the Lord died for everybody. Does, do, do people make terrible decisions? Yes, they do. Have I made terrible decisions? Yes, I have. Did I repent of it? Yes, I did. Am I trying not to do it again? You better believe it. So there's a difference. Now, that's all I want to say. I, I've got a, just a, a minute or two, and I want to remind you, this coming week, Wednesday night, I'll be speaking at the Broad Street Church of Christ in Scottsboro. Uh, they've invited me to be a part of their summer series, and I always enjoy going to Scottsboro. I always enjoy meeting with the brethren there, and I'd like to invite all of you that are watching who live in that area. It starts at 6.30, so please come and be with us as we sing and pray and, and try to get our lives right with the Lord. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate so much your interest in things that are right. A word about Cuba. Uh, we were able to get some money to the preacher in Cuba. Uh, Emil Pettis is able to come to Miami. And we were able to give him $5,000 recently in order to buy, he can buy dried food in Miami and put it on the plane and send it into Cuba. And when it gets in Havana, he puts it in his van and takes it all over the island and gives them a minute of relief, a little bit of relief physically. Now we helped with the Bibles and I love that. Now we've got to help physically with the food. And please pray with me about that situation in Cuba now that China has established a training base in Cuba that is very dangerous and I hope we realize it. Thank you so much for watching. If I can help spiritually in any way, please let me know. Until next week, may the Lord bless you is my prayer. Abundant Living, a ministry of the Mayfair Church of Christ. A place where children are loved, where families are strengthened, where teens learn to serve, and grandparents are special. Mayfair, truly a family place for all ages. The Mayfair Church of Christ, we're saving a special place for you. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the Lord.